So um, our service landscape uh, is, uh, is from Icotech, so we are a key um, Microsoft implementation partner. Um, uh, our key support partner uh, in Power BI, uh, Project Online, and SharePoint. We also have uh, the, the, the Power Apps, uh, um, Power Automate, Dynamic CRM, Exchange Online Teams, and, and OneDrive as well. And this the, this is where um, Darren's sort of expertise comes into it, uh, which you'll go into a, a bit later. Um, so the team itself um, on the call today, you can see Joel there's the CEO, I think he'll be joining us later. Um, but on the call today is myself, Geraint, uh, partner manager, have been 20 years in the in, in the IT sector, um, mainly as a, as a partner manager or a, or a business development manager, so understands uh, the sort of the, the, the landscape and how that's progressed over the last sort of uh, 20 odd years and, and where we are today. Um, and obviously, Darren uh, is the Power Platform lead. Uh, he'll go into a bit more detail in a bit. So who do Icotech partner with? Um, like four key main partners, uh, Department of Business, Energy, Industrial Strategy, BASE. Uh, we've done a lot of work with them, uh, delivering um, uh, delivering uh, Project Online uh, and uh, some uh, apps to them. We have an intellectual property office, uh, office of natural statistics, and Techly T. So there's plenty of, of free tea in the office. Unfortunately, we can't get to it at the moment, um, but it'll be there for when we get back. So without further ado, I shall hand you over to Darren. Thanks, Gary. Right. Uh, yep, yeah, my name is Darren Floyd. Uh, a bit of a background for me. Um, I first encountered SharePoint when I was the development manager for the Gloucester Constabulary. Uh, and since then, I've, I've worked with pretty much all of the different iterations of SharePoint. Um, worked for Capita uh, and worked for um, Quick Sergeant, a kid's um, cancer charity. Um, and first encountered uh, the Power Platform around about 2016 when it first started to really come online and realised very quickly that just how um, alive that it brings uh, SharePoint and uh, and the whole, whole uh, proposition as well. So without any further ado, uh, what is SharePoint, which is a good question. Um, it's, it's a collaboration portal which Microsoft uh, created. Um, and it's been around since 2001. Um, and probably the most common, I, I would have, I would make a guess that some of the people on call today are using a version of SharePoint. Um, and you're probably using it to either store documents and information or to build, or it'll be the platform you've built an intranet on, where you'd have kind of company news um, and policy and forms for the staff to to access uh, now up until 2016 <clears throat> it was all what's called on-prem that, me that means it would reside on a server either remotely or in the business premises which you would usually ban be managed by uh, an internal team um, and increasingly uh, since 2016 it's been moving on to the cloud which has the kind of benefits that um, patches are done automatically, updates are done automatically, um, and it's it's a, a lot, it's much faster moving as well. Um, so yeah, there I, I can't think of how many different versions of SharePoint there have been. I do remember doing a migration to SharePoint 2013 for DAC Beechcroft, which is a, a law firm in Bristol. And back then, I remember Microsoft saying it was the last version of SharePoint that they were going to to uh, roll out, and that was two versions ago. So um, there have been a lot of different ones knocking about, and there might be, you might have a, a 2013, maybe even 2010 version, but what's pretty common to all different versions of SharePoint are, are lists and uh, libraries um, and I both li lists and libraries lists of where you would 
um, have kind of flat information. So, for example, moving ahead a bit, we've got some information that we use for a uh, a staff absence portal. So in that list, we would have um, details such as the mem uh, staff member's name, how much allocation of holiday they've got, and their email address. And that can be updated, of course. Libraries, very similar, but um, they do contain, um, they usually contain documents if it PDFs, um, Word documents, and you can put version control on there. Um, and you can put metadata on as well. So tags where you, that you can create so that the user can actually meaningfully find those those documents. Uh, web parts, um, they, these are basically the building blocks which create a page or a site. Uh, in SharePoint Online, they're now called apps. So a typical example would be um, a content editor web part where you would put place that on the page and you basically add text welcome to your brand new site and you could add links in there or um, you could also create a um, a view to a particular library so if you've got a library um, of, say of HR documents you could point a web part at that and it would show all of the documents or as many documents as you want actually in that in that view um, and last but not least permission groups um, and these these lock down a site or page or even documents um, to what um, what you want what a SharePoint administrator or you know, a manager wants them to want a person to see so you can go very very granular on what you can um, allow people to see and in fact in a, in a very recent contract of mine there would be down to each actual documents the where there would be just you know four or five people that could see it so you it's um if anyone if anyone has been a sharepoint administrator in minister in the administrator in the past that <laughs> controlling the permissions on sharepoint is is always a massive uh, amount of your kind of job so I just wanted to show you what kind of old SharePoint looked like. So um, what traditionally would happen is with uh, different iterations that they it would they pretty much Microsoft would move a few things around, place it in different sections just to confuse the poor old SharePoint administrator. Um, and maybe if they were feeling generous, roll out a little bit of extra functionality. Um, so this is a kind of atypical SharePoint 2013 site. This is what a new SharePoint online site would look like. This is a communication site. Um, and you can see that the layout and the design has been altered quite radically from the site we saw before. Uh, and this is to make it more compatible with um, tablets and mobile devices. The SharePoint Online is, is very different to earlier versions. Um, the sites are now administered, administered via the cloud instead of on-premises with patches and etc. Um, the two most common SharePoint Online site templates are communication sites, which you saw just previously, and team sites. Uh, communication sites are principally used to share news, such as HR developments or company-wide staff news. So, if you were doing, if you're creating a um, share, uh, SharePoint intranet, the the front page, your home page of the the intranet would probably be a communication uh, site because that's what it's set up to do, and it's it's a nice layout. It's a nice kind of fresh, modern layout. Uh, and a team site would be used for sharing documents and collaborating with your team members. <clears throat> now, a common phrase that you'd hear when building business solutions in SharePoint was out of the box. So if you go to a developer and you'd say, um, I want SharePoint to have, for example, a carousel on the front page in 2010, um, 
that wasn't out of the box, so that would require some development. Now it's been brought online, it's a fairly easy thing to do. Um, so it would mean that there would be little or no customization. So you you could probably, you wouldn't get need to get a developer involved. Um, it would just be out of the box and you could just create a element of it with, with quite, uh, quite ease without um, a huge amount of knowledge. Uh, more no, more common now, you'll hear no or low code solutions across the power platforms. This is a little bit deceptive because <clears throat> in my experience of SharePoint and all the power platforms, to actually, as soon as you start wanting to do something a little bit clever or um, if you wanted to, if you've got very specific business needs, it will require a little bit of code but it, it really just depends on on what your business needs are um, but the real power and the real excitement um, when it comes to SharePoint online is the way it connects to all the other Office 365 products such as Power Automate and Power Apps which we'll, we'll come to now. So Power Automate was previously called Flow uh, it's Microsoft's own workflow product. So previously, if you needed a workflow on your site, you needed to develop one using SharePoint Designer, which wasn't always very intuitive. And in fact, um, Microsoft have either they have retired SharePoint Designer or they're in the process. I think they have. What SharePoint Designer was, was basically a, a web editor. If anyone used Dreamweaver, it was kind of similar to that. Um, it wasn't always very intuitive. It did what it needed to do. Uh, or you'd use a third party piece of software like Nintex, which I've previously used, which is a great bit of, bit of kit. Um, but Power Automate is Microsoft's own answer to that. And, and it is very, very powerful. It connects all aspects of the Power Suite. So for example, you could send an alert to a user once a document is added to OneDrive or make a stakeholder aware that the MS project RAG status has changed. Uh, but we're going to be focusing on, on SharePoint and users and that as our basis. So common power automate flows would include uh, an approval flow, which we'll uh, go into a bit more detail in a sec, where a request would be sent to a manager to approve or reject. Uh, a scheduled flow, uh, which is set to run at the same time every day or month, I will check if certain criteria are hit. So for example, uh, if an item is within a date range uh, and it'll start an action such as sending an email reminder to a user or a group. So you could have, uh, as, as I've dealt with fairly recently, there's a some procedure documents which need to be reviewed on a annual basis. So it's you can set up an alert and it can say, look at the um, date that it um, is due to to end. If it it's within that date, or if it's within say, I don't know, 60 days, you can send an alert to the document owner saying, please be aware that this is going to be um, coming up to its date in 60 days and then you could send another one in 30 days um, just to make them aware that um, that this is happening and this is about to the document is about to expire so this is a kind of typical flow so at the top you'll see when an item is created or modified that is when an item is created or modified in a SharePoint list for this example um, so when a, an item is added or modified to the SharePoint list, uh, subsequent actions are triggered uh, as a result. So the example here is an approval workflow with a condition which decides what happens next. So just to briefly go through what this is doing, the two um, actions that say staff absence list and get items there basically pulling some details through from our list for our flow to use. Um, start and wait for approval, that's pretty self-explanatory. It kicks off an approval flow. And then when we get to the condition, 
the, the condition in this um, in this example would be um, is has the request been approved? If it has been approved, it goes down one route. If it doesn't, it goes down another and sends a an email back to the user saying this hasn't been approved and this is why. So what are Power Apps? So the advent of Power Apps has made much of the functionality truly mobile for the first time. On the right, you can see an app which I've uh, built in the last week or so, um, and I'll go into uh, that. We'll be providing our practical demonstration of, of how a, 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 an app can work. So a Power App can be used both on your desktop or your mobile and can provide a portal to the rest of your Power Platform sites. Um, previously, one of the most common things that I've heard when creating a SharePoint site is, can we make it not look like SharePoint? Um, and previously, that has involved um, some, it has involved customization, it's involved um, some coding, but you can make um, a uh, front or you can make a page of SharePoint look um, a lot nicer and a, a far more responsive if you use Power Apps. Um, it, it, you can put all kinds of logic into it. We won't be covering that in this webinar, um, but yeah, it, it's, a, it's a fairly straightforward thing to do. A mobile app can be used if you have employees in the field. So for example, uh, an employee could download a stock check app and fill in a stock check form in on their phone Submit and record, and a record would be submitted to a SharePoint list with a real time auditing and reporting with an alert sent to a manager, making them aware of the addition. Um, so, as it's effectively kind of making SharePoint mobile or making the Power Suite mobile. So, if you do have any employees in the field um, who do need to report back, um, they don't have to wait, they don't have to write down on a notepad. Uh, they can actually kind of take this with them. Um, so there are with Power Apps um, uh, and with Power Automate, there are already um, inbuilt templates which Microsoft have provided. They they are a good starting point. Um, for, for creation of a, an app or a flow. Um, but what I would say is that they do need some configuration. So for example, with a, a template for say a Power Automate, um, as you can see, there's a few examples here, you would need to point it at the, the right list um, you would make need to make sure that the the fields are, are formatted correctly. So there's there's a few things. I mean, most of them are, are, are pretty straightforward. Um, but the level of configuration that you would need, say, if you went down the route of building a uh, an app or a flow using a template, really depends on what your what your business needs are. So now I'm I'm going to show you a Power App which uh, I built recently uh, for internal absence requests. Uh, in the back end are two SharePoint lists where the requests are kept. One basically um, has details of the uh, staff um, member. So. As I said previously, name, allocation, uh, different things like that. And the second one is is where the approval uh, process kicks off. So what we're doing is we're picking the staff member, uh, what type of absence it is, and then looking at the at the date. You can also um, book half days as well. But for this demonstration, we'll just go for whole days. And we'll go through to June, give myself a nice big lot of time off. 
and then we just scroll up a little bit and then submit scroll up now and we've got our success screen and this can be you can put whatever details and format it however you want and change the colors as well if you want as you can see we, we, we put our logo on so what happens next is that a, a approver would get a request so we're going to be kind and we're going to improve approve the list So I've, I've more than earned this uh, this holiday. So then I submit it. So this then triggers a, a flow. So what happens next then is that I get notification that my leave has been approved. And as you can see there, it, it now says um, that I have seven days left and seven days requested sorry and i have 15 remaining um and also that uh, it in the subject line it um it cuts it off a little bit but it says how much time that um what's the date range but in in this this is a very good basic email um notification you can put a lot more in there you can add comments um yeah, you know, whatever you really, whatever fields you've got in the SharePoint list, you can add them to this, to this alert. And what that does then, it all there's an action and it adds the holiday then to our Outlook calendar. And we can also be, we can also request that it's, um, it blocks out um, or it puts a holiday event in someone else's calendar. So, for example, in this instance, um, it would block, it would create an event uh, or a, uh, yeah, an event in the Outlook calendar of my manager to say uh, Darren has booked this time off and it's been approved. So if we go back now to our holiday app, And we click on my holidays we can see there you go uh, 15 days remaining um, that's the time range and um, that's how much we requested so it's a that's a, a, a fairly kind of like straightforward app um, and you can I think I might have skipped over a little bit but you could also um, you could also have a you use the camera on your phone and say take a photo of a receipt uh, and submit it and that would submit it to say an expenses um, an expenses list um, so, and so you'd you'd have that um, you'd have that receipt already in there which would kind of cut out a bit of, bit of time as well um, so yeah that's it that's a